That is the sound of the lineup of customers waiting to order their meals at Montreal's landmark Orange Julep restaurant. And if you've been there, you know they're an institution on Decary Boulevard. Well, I was in that lineup a couple of days ago with my mask on. It was the first time I've actually left my home in Toronto to travel anywhere in a year. But since I'm now double vaccinated, I couldn't wait to drive to Montreal and reunite with my 84-year-old mother, whose birthday is Wednesday, and with my sister and her family and my nephews and niece, who I also haven't seen in a long time. And I have to tell you that seeing everyone and being able to hug them again has been a bit weird. It's been great, but a bit weird. It also still feels weird to be able to go into restaurants and eat inside without masks on. Although I did that too this week. And I wonder how many of you are also probably feeling your way back into society slowly after months of being careful and staying home and doing everything on Zoom, including work. And for some, that has meant being lonely. And that's where Laura Whitney Snyderman comes in. For the past year, this Canadian Jewish psychology expert and entrepreneur has been helping people find and make new friends during COVID through a Facebook group called Kind. And she says, even though things are opening up again, digital friendships are here to stay. So when you remove the need for someone to live, you know, down the street or in the same city as you, you actually open up a world of potential best friends. I'm Ellen Besner, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like for Wednesday, July 21st, 2021. Welcome to the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. The idea for Kind is pretty simple. It's just like a dating app. You make a profile on the Facebook group. You say what you're looking for in terms of a friend and what you can offer. The Facebook group has been free and it now has over 10,000 members so far. And during the pandemic, they've also done a bunch of speed dating type meetups where members would pay about 10 bucks and they get introduced to people specifically custom designed by Kind's algorithm that they would probably like as friends. So what's next for Kind and combating loneliness now that the social distancing restrictions are easing a bit across Canada and in North America? Coming up, we'll chat with the founder, Laura Whitney Snyderman. But first... Here's what's making news elsewhere in the country right now. The leader of the Green Party, Annamie Paul, is back in the news again, but this time because she says she wasn't invited to the government's National Emergency Summit on Antisemitism, which is taking place Wednesday. Paul tweeted that as the only Jewish leader of a federal party, she can't understand why she wasn't on the guest list. Neither was the leader of the opposition, Aaron O'Toole, although he isn't Jewish, mind you, even though he's asked to come. The summit's being run by the Ministry of Diversity and Inclusion and Youth with the help of the Anti-Racism Directorate of the federal government. But only the opening of the session is being live-streamed to the public and the media. The rest of the seven hours are being done behind closed doors, well, as best you can on Zoom, but in private anyway. A spokesperson for the minister told us the opening remarks and lunchtime session will be live-streamed on the Canadian Heritage Facebook page. And the rest of the summit will be closed to media and the public to ensure, quote, a safe space for participants to exchange on their lived experiences, unquote. If you want to watch it, we put the link in our show notes and we'll have full coverage of the summit on Thursday's podcast. No lonely people by 2030. That's the motto of the founder of Kind, Laura Whitney Snyderman. And she joins me now. You started off to help other people who were lonely. Tell us how how the idea came to you. When I was living in New York City prior to the pandemic, um, I was actually completing my master's in clinical and counseling psychology, and I was running my my first company called The Get Together, which was an international women's retreat company designed to enhance self-esteem and well-being. And while I was there, I, in truth, I was working all the time and For the first time in my life, I didn't prioritize building new friendships, new relationships. And what I found was after about six months of, you know, working all day on my master's and then working all evening on my projects was that I was experiencing the detrimental mental health impacts of prolonged loneliness. It took me a while to realize that that was what was happening, but I was having debilitating sleeplessness and anxiety and I started to actually study loneliness 
at in my masters and i realized that everything that i was learning about was exactly what i was experiencing and so when i returned to toronto in march i graduated from my masters and the pandemic hit i realized that i wasn't going to be able to interact with the community that i had here in the way that i wanted and that so many people around me were probably going to experience the impacts of loneliness for the first time because of prolonged aloneness and so i thought you know all of the work that i'd been doing with my prior company to help connect people in person you know the methodology that we created must be applicable in a digital format how had the response been to your program you know loneliness is not a new challenge because especially in adulthood you know when you're young and you're in high school and for those who are privileged enough to then go on to university uh even people who are you know working at a corporation these are the types of structures that allow us to build and maintain friends because they create consistency in the amount of time that you actually get to spend with people but for many people who you know leave those structures or you know as adults myself an entrepreneur anybody who kind of works on their own it actually is quite hard to make new friends the more that i dove into loneliness the more that i realized that you know yes covid has drastically increased the number of people who self identify as lonely but actually before the pandemic one in five canadians and three in five americans already self reported as feeling lonely what's reflected globally now is that we're seeing that japan um the uk they've actually implemented loneliness ministers into their governments which i think just further reinforces this this point that you know loneliness is something that is an epidemic and it's something that we need to address regardless of whether we are in lockdown Tell us a bit about the demographics. You said most of the people um one in 5 are lonely. We have, you know, we had one woman who was like 85 and she was saying that, you know, she doesn't have any grandchildren and she's looking to, you know, make some some non-official grandchildren and she got like 150 posts of people who you know were like come over like come hang out with my kids we would love that um and then we have people from anywhere from you know 18 um i would say the largest demographic is between 30 to 40 can you tell us besides the 85 year old lady who said she wanted to meet grandchildren some of the other success stories the foundation is of kindness based on generosity and reciprocity So when you join the Facebook group you're encouraged to create a post where you introduce yourself and then you state what you have to offer and what you're looking to receive. So that could be a skill, knowledge or time exchange. For example, uh one gentleman here in Toronto last summer when I when things were a bit more open, uh he offered sailing lessons. on his 40 foot yacht and what he was looking for was photography lessons and so all of these people who he met were all photographers and they came and they also gave him lessons and they took photos together so that's just one like beautiful example of you know now he when he goes sailing he le- he's learned how to take beautiful photographs of the things that he's seeing and experiencing while he's sailing and also you know he made so many friends and are they all singles No, no. Actually, one of the thing that I think is interesting, you know, is that you know, unlike dating or, you know, pardon my language, but find, finding someone to have sex with which are often like biological needs. You know, you're looking for your life partner. Uh people want to go and have sex. That's why Tinder is so popular. Um but nonetheless, when you when you look at friendships, friendships are actually the first thing that we often let go of when life gets busy so when you're working really hard when you start having children when your responsibilities get increase and then later in life you know when your children start to go off to school you realize or many people have come to realize that they haven't prioritized their friendships and so they actually don't have any friends now we've just um gone through 18 months of uh, lockdown here in Ontario but of course uh, all around the world uh people are getting vaccinated there's social events but um there's this sort of scared I'm scared I'm worried it's going to be so awkward to get used to being back 
in social, you know, face to face. What advice do you have for your people who are listening about re-engaging with friends physically? I would say, you know, the first and most important thing is to just pay attention to how you're feeling. You know, don't try to force yourself back into the same level of like social interaction that maybe you had before the pandemic, because we've all changed, you know, and we need to take it slow. We need to listen to ourselves. And you might have realized that you need more time for yourself than you thought you did before the pandemic. So I would say don't don't put so much pressure on yourself to try to uh, be the person you were before. And also the other thing, you know, on Kind, we kind of have four foundational pillars about how to make and maintain meaningful friendships. And the first pillar is mutual vulnerability. So it's super important when you're, when you're reconnecting with friends to try and let yourself be real with those people about how you're feeling, how this past year has been for you, instead of trying to, you know, block that away and just engage in a more superficial level. Because what I think you'll realize if you come into these relationships from a place of vulnerability and honesty is that other people will meet you there and it will actually be much easier to reconnect from that place. You know, I think we're all, we've all gone through a lot. We've gone through this collective struggle and that's actually a point of opportunity for connection because we have, even though all of our experiences have been so different, we actually for the first time ever have like a globally shared experience in some way that we can utilize as a way to connect us. So what's next for Laura Whitney Snyderman? Well, in the fall, she says her company's new Kind app will be coming out. Meantime, their new website is up already and it's got listings of events and how to join. And we put all the links in our show notes too. And that's what Jewish Canada sounds like for this episode of the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. Integrity, community, quality, and customer care. Today's listener shout out goes to Rosa Feinstone in Montreal. And we'll end the episode today a little bit differently because I need a favor. I'm going to be interviewing the head of the Canadian Snowbirds Association in a few days. So for anyone planning to go to Florida or Arizona or even warm places elsewhere over the winter, please tell me what I should ask them. Send me your questions. I'll get you some answers. I'm at ebessner at the cjn.ca.